Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, and you're definitely in for a treat, because I'm going to be reviewing one of my favorite comedies of all time. Now, I love so many films in my film collection, such as Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, The Sandlot, The Mighty Ducks movies, and so on, as well as Enchanted, Coraline, and all the rest and all these other movies that came out and I'm always a big fan of Bill Murray along with John Candy, Dan Aykroyd, John Belushi and so on I mean there's so many comedians that I really enjoy but anyway I'm here to review one of my favorite movies of all time that I've seen since I was a kid I was 10 years old when I finally saw it I almost turned 11 later on although I actually saw the film on VHS originally on VHS because I never saw it in theaters sadly I'll go figure but on the other hand I was so happy that I got to see it for the first time and that alone made me want to buy the VHS tape ever since I was a kid and then I finally got the DVD later on in a replacement for the VHS tape and now as of this week it finally came out on blu-ray for the first time so here it goes my favorite film of all time is heavyweights yay that's right heavyweights heavyweights oh okay <laughs> yeah I mean this is just something that I never thought I would have in my in the palms of my hands or what or at this rate holding between my fingers <laughs> yes because this is the DVD of course of the film and this is what it looked like even at the back with all the pictures looks exactly like the VHS tape was when it was released and it has the no holds barred fun quote on there and it says they came they saw they conquered and consumed yeah and look at all these pictures here and all the rest well the blu-ray that just came out has this where they added Ben Stiller uh, dressing for hiking and yes it has the usual uh, from the on the poster but you probably know that the original poster of this film they were wearing regular clothes they weren't wearing their, their camp home uniforms which I know you didn't see in the film did not look like this but it's just added as, as it is and it does still has that famous quote which is different from here it does not mention from the creators of the mighty ducks whatsoever but it's you know, very traditional and here's their cover right there at the back. Um, basically typical Disney, always putting their Blu-ray um, logo on there, on the, on the top. I mean, this is what this is what it looks like in recent DVD releases. With all the extras, you wouldn't believe it, all the extras right there, even the trailer included, that somehow the DVD did not have whatsoever, because it's in full screen. It has the languages and sound quality, the, the Dolby Digital surround sound, but it did not have all the extras. So that's a shame. But it's still worth owning for what it's worth. But this one, look at this. So much extras on one film. You wouldn't believe that they took so much time to release this. But thank God. And look at all these pictures that they did include on the DVD, with the exception of one picture. You know, the blob and Ben Stiller as Tony Perkins. Yes. See? Typical of Disney, but thank goodness they released this. See? Now they care. They should have cared about this a long time ago. And they should have had, too. Because it's still the best film ever made. It may not be the biggest hit of all time when it first came out, because it bombed at the box office 
but I had my chance of glory to see this film for the first time because I remember seeing the theatrical trailer of this movie when I went to see the Santa Claus in 1994. I wanted to see this film, not because it has one of my favorite stars of the Mighty Ducks movies, but it's also the fact that it had Ben Stiller in it and has all the other actors as well. And plus, it's set in summer camp. Another main reason, yeah, because like movies like Meatballs, as well as Salute Your Shorts, the TV show on Nickelodeon, this has the feel of it, except they're, they're fat. Almost as fat as Donkey Lips, played by Michael Ray Bauer in the show. Yeah, <laughs> I had to mention that, but hey, it's... You know, you just totally love this. I mean, I love Heavyweights, the Salute Your Shorts, the Nickelodeon show, and I definitely love Meatballs. I mean, those were good films right there. And a great show. I mean, yeah, you just can't help but love it. Well, anyway, I'm going to get to the review right now. The movie stars, of course, Eric Schwartz, who went on to be in the first Mighty Ducks movie, but hasn't been in the sequels, sadly. But yes, we're very familiar for, with that actor. Along with Keenan Thompson, who was in the Mighty Ducks sequels, 1, 2, and 3, um, and went on to do shows like All That and Keenan and Kel, as well as Good Burger, and so many movies after that, as well as joining the cast of Saturday Night Live. You know, and since then, he became one of my favorite actors of all time. And I love him. So Sean Rice, who played Goldberg in all three Mighty Ducks movies. He's very funny in this movie, and he really is as Josh. Uh, also starring in this movie is Tom McGowan who went on to do uh, TV appearances such as Frasier and was in a short-lived TV show called Down to Shore before this movie came out before it was made so I guess someone we're very familiar with. Paul Feig who went on to create the show along with Judd Apatow um, called Freaks and Geeks and went on to direct the movie that just came out in 2011 called Bridesmaids. Um, actually a good film I really enjoyed. So Alan Colbert who went on to appear in so many Adam Sandler movies. Um, and yes, he's been in a lot of Adam Sandler films as far as I'm concerned. But he's he's always funny. It's Tom Hodge, Ben Stiller's real life parents, Jerry Stiller, of course, who went on to play Frank Costanza on Seinfeld along with his wife Ann Mira. Leah Lil played uh, Nurse Julie. I think she went on to do other stuff too for a while. And of course, who couldn't forget? Ben Stiller. Yes, the star of the film. The true star of the movie, actually. Because he went on to star in the movie Next of Kin. That was his earlier role. And then started out on his, his own TV show that he did twice both on MTV and Fox, The Ben Stiller Show, which, of course, he worked with his um, co-writer and best friend and producer as well, Judd Apatow. Yeah, great combination, isn't it? Because it does have some familiar themes for The Ben Stiller Show because um, to the Tony Perkins character, you know, the villain in the film, it's sort of like a resemblance to one of his characters in the show. So, that's a good plus right there. <laughs> but of course, he went on to do other movies like There's Something About Mary, Meet the Parents films, Dodgeball, which inspired his character, uh, Night of the Museum films, Madagascar, Permanent Midnight. Oh, man. Oh, yes, Flirting with Disaster, which had his hair like the Tony Perkins character and so on yeah he's a very funny guy and you know what I really love him he's cool but anyway let's get back to the review that we're about to show as the film opens an 11 year old kid named Gerald Garner played by Aaron Schwartz had just recently got out of high school during the summer on vacation until he missed the school bus had a hard time throwing the baseball on the baseball field, almost got attacked by a vicious dog, and drinks the entire pitcher of ice-cold lemonade that he paid for, until he finally went home and actually met a visitor 
Roger Johnson that he just came by to to let them know that there's a summer camp that he's being joined to known as Camp Hope. So in order for that, they watched a professional video and he saw pretty much everything that they have in camp such as go-karts, the blob, and so on until he realized that the camp itself turned out to be a fat camp. He got so upset because of it because he, he has the feeling that he's going to be um, he's going to be, you know, teased and humiliated like it, like how he was during his time. So prior to that, he did not want to go until the very next day when he went on an airplane all the way from Long Island, that's where he lives, to North Carolina, which where Camp Hope was located. So he met Roy, played by Keenan Thompson, who's decided that he's also going to Fat Camp as well. So they went outside just to wait for Pat Finley, played by Tom McGowan, who's driving on the bus, to pick them up all the way from there to Camp Hope. As they entered, they, they packed all their things up, including all their candies and everything. They met some of the counselors, including the new um, nurse by the name of Nurse Julie, played by, by Leia Leo, along with Tim, played by Paul Feig. And of course, they were getting ready to go meet the Bushkins, who was the owners of the camp and started the company since 1962. And they're both played by Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. And they both just been announced that they've been filed for Chapter 9 bankruptcy. So in order to that, they were no longer the owners of the camp. Until they finally found out that it's being taken over by a new fitness guru instructor by the name of Tony Perkis. Who turns out to be the most uh, biggest sellout of all, of all fitness instructions and and professional infomercials that he's been doing and he's played by Ben Stiller unfortunately things didn't turn out quite as planned because they all got afraid about what was going on once once he took over the camp things just went straight to hell after that once they once they were competing such as the baseball scene the very hilarious baseball scene they were being set up for weights in order for them to be part of the professional video until they start losing weight in order to become skinny and also the fact that they won't be able to have as much fun as they used to when they were at Camp Hope such as going on the blob doing the go-karts and so on everything and also you know have food and have a party and everything yeah. But things didn't seem like it go as planned. As everybody started to feel, you know, very left out, depressed, mutilated, teased, almost in the same way that Gerald's feeling when he was in school. And of course, you know, they've been banalized too by the camp MPV. The whole camp was being taken over all the way around. And somehow Tony Perkins turned out to be very rough and hard-headed and the way he treated all the campers and counselors as well and make this camp into a living nightmare so in order to get their revenge on Tony Perkins they went ahead and decided to have their own plan to get rid of him and try to turn things back to the way they were so they'll never mess it up again so they had to go to a 20 minute mile hike which turned out to be very dangerous especially when they went all the way up to the cliff where Tony Perkins actually jumped all the way up to the branches which went up way higher than I expected and swinged around all the way around and thinking that yes this guy was really starting to snap up that it was going to cause them to definitely get killed for this and so of course, they had to do their prank in order for Tony to chase them around and finally get what he deserves at the end when he finally fell into a trap that was never attended, but it just happened. And he finally got arrested inside 
the the cabin where he was trapped and they guard him in there so he doesn't escape and if he ever does well meanwhile they started having their own fun since they couldn't do any of that stuff um, once Tony Perkins was taken over and also the fact that they finally got to eat a lot of food that they really want and also the fact that they get to have their own party even though they've been almost humiliated when they had the girls um, from the other camp you know they were doing the dance scene I love the songs of all the 70s songs they put in like Love Machine and You Sexy Fiend and all that yeah. and they also which happened you know in the middle of the film after all the disaster started and of course they um, they did a lot of funny stuff in this until Tony Perkis finally escaped from the cabin and somehow came along during Parents Day a lot of parents came along they were watching the video to find out what's been going on since this cap has been going straight to hell and they saw exactly what Tony Perkis has been doing throughout the whole month and he did something this crazy and he f and also threatened to almost uh, harm everybody including uh, Gerald's parents like especially his father, stood up to him. He almost killed him, by the way. If you look at the special features on the Blu-ray, which was never shown originally in the film, but it was almost, he was threatening him with a bow and arrow, because now we know how insane he was. They finally called Tony Perkis Sr., the son of Tony Perkis, also played by Ben Stiller. He's playing a double role, and, and a very funny one, too. Sort of like Alan Arkin in that role. Yeah, he was in a film called Indian Summer, another camp movie that I like. Yeah, he also talks deeper than him. At first I thought it was him too. Anyway, they told them that they want them to get their money back and everything, but they all let them know that as long as they have someone um, in charge of the camp, so in order for this camp to be back to normal, they hired Pat to do this job. And, and everything was all set up, and they were already... Um, and already trying to fix everything like the way they're supposed to and also they were competing with the Apache Relay once again with the Camp MPV which they've been competing for years it's hard to believe they're trying to set things right until they finally win the cup so of course we we get all these activities that they put in in the film and of course the famous go-kart scene which was which would made the movie even amazing and it was perfect yeah. and that was pretty much it I really and I gotta say from from the from the beginning to end I really enjoy this movie a lot as a kid and as an adult because it had everything that you never thought you would see it had all the famous quotes in this movie such as the Seymour Butts joke which Originally was the Peter Fitz joke that was in the Blu-ray. Thank goodness that was included. And also there was a lot of funny jokes too. So a lot of hilarious scenes such as the baseball scene. And all these other uh, pranks and traps that Tony's been suffering. Of course, and Tony Perkis doing his funny bits as <laughs> a fitness instructor running around. Gone crazy and everything. That was also hilarious. And a lot of jokes that uh, they've been putting off, that almost, uh, almost been close enough to become too racy and too dark for a Disney movie, but it works, <laughs> nevertheless. It has a great cast. I really enjoy this movie a lot. You just can't go wrong with the quotes, such as, you know, this, especially the my favorite quote in that movie called in the film. <laughs> Uh, don't don't put Twinkies on your pizza, or even another funny joke was uh, <laughs> you're broken my camera. <laughs> that Lars was saying in the movie. Oh man, Lars is also very funny in this too, played by Tom Hodge. I I just <laughs> I love his uh, I love the fact that he's playing a German guy with that accent. It sounds a little British, but. But it's mostly German. He's just <laughs> with the buddy system. Buddy! 
Buddy! <laughs> oh man, I just couldn't help but laugh at this film. You know, and, and there's other funny scenes too. <laughs> such as, uh, um, such as, uh, <laughs> oh god, I just, I just can't help but laugh at this, this funny dialogue is in this movie. <laughs> such as, skinny wieners? And, oh man, you just gotta watch this movie for yourself. It's just so hilarious. I mean, I can't believe some people actually even missed out when this film came out. It's amazing. It didn't do so well, but yet, it was so hilarious. You just you just want to watch it again and again. You know, I, I just couldn't believe how much humor they put into it. And I owe it all to Judd Apatow for doing this. And also director Stephen Brill, who also did The Mighty Ducks. He was involved in it. He also made cameo appearances in the movie. Man, he did a very good job since this was his first time directing this movie. And boy, he really did a great job. I love it. And man, and after seeing those behind the scenes look of this movie, which was shot back in 1994 and 5, I mean, boy, it's funny how it's so hilarious to see Ben Stiller acting like he doesn't know who his parents were. Go figure. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, it's hard to believe that he works with them, but it's cool they got to be in this movie. It's just, you know. <laughs> oh man, you just gotta watch this movie. I definitely recommend this to everybody, uh, younger generation, older generation, everybody who was a big fan of this film, including Sean C. Phillips and Brendan Mitchell, because they were totally a big fan of it. I, I mean, you, you just can't go wrong with them. They felt like they were in the movie as well. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine if I was in it too. <laughs> I just wish they had made a sequel to this. That would have been cool. Awesome. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's just, you just can't help but love it. It's also a guilty pleasure too. So, you just, <laughs> I'm just so excited. But anyway, out of all places, I give Heavyweights five stars. Yes, five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.